Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Major Vicky Warrington, and I'm a serving officer within the Corps of Royal Engineers. I'm now entering my 19th year of regular service, having joined the cadets at 12 in my hometown of Barmouth in North Wales, and also having completed three very enjoyable years at the London University Officer Training Corps. I've completed three operational tours and deployed to an excess of 20 different countries throughout my service. I've worked in combat engineering, construction engineering, project management, and more recently in the training environment, all which I've absolutely loved. So having cantered through the first 20 years of my life, I found myself wanting to turn what had been nothing more than an after school activity into my career. I joined at a time when Frank was the front face of the army. Now there'll be lots of you out there who are way too young to know who Frank was. But at the time, Frank was the front face of the army recruiting campaign, and he can only be likened to an action man figure. Regularly seen skiing down mountains, rafting through jungles, and conducting peace support operations worldwide. I wanted to be like Frank. So at the age of 16, my goal was to be like the guy I saw on telly. My school had only been co-ed for two years, and having girls in the cadets was simply not a thing. But the problem was, I didn't want to be just like Frank. I wanted to be Frank only better. So I promptly booked an appointment with my headmaster and told him exactly why I wanted to be in the army cadets. And I also asked him to explain why I shouldn't be. Clearly he couldn't, he let me join. And four years later, I was the first female cadet sergeant major and also the first female Lord Lieutenant's cadet for Gloucestershire. This was at 16 and at that stage in my life, being a girl never fazed me. And I can honestly say, I've never really seen it as a blocker and still don't. However, Achievements to date have sometimes come with a challenge. Throughout my career, and I'm sure the same for you, I have sat through many inspirational speakers and I've walked out of the conferences feeling five foot taller and feeling like I could conquer the world. But then you get back to your desk and reality kicks in and you're occasionally left feeling she and he or he were absolutely fantastic. But I just don't think I could get there. So what I want to do today is just give you some of my thoughts on how you can uh, achieve small steps towards success and gain attainable confidence. So I'm going to start with um, setting your own goals and what does your success look like? So I think this is so important regardless of gender. Someone once said to me that a goal without a plan is nothing more than a dream and I do somewhat believe that. Find your purpose, find what your purpose is where you fit into your organisation. That may be at school, college, university, work or even at home. Write it down somewhere. You're then halfway to committing yourself to achieving it. Then plan how you're going to achieve it. In the military environment, not everybody wants to be a future commanding officer um, or the next regimental sergeant major. Your goal may be to pass your next career course. Not necessarily just pass it and that is absolutely fine. You may want to achieve the next rank, pass the next set of exams, given that education, and these are all great goals. But something you must do is believe that you can achieve it. You must have faith and believe in yourself. And this is where I come on to self-confidence. Self-confidence is something that some women lack or have lacked, and I totally understand it. The females on this conference call today in uniform that are part of the Corps of Royal Engineers, in my opinion, are part of a very special group of ladies. In a corps of nearly 10,000 serving personnel, there are 165 of us rank ranged from sapper to full colonel. The majority of us joined the corps when you could count the amount of females on your fingers and toes. We have spent our entire careers wanting to fit in, be part of the team, be included and seen as equal. We have spent the majority of our service comparing ourselves to our male counterparts who perceptionally are bigger, stronger, faster, and simply better. I mean, let's face it, they can all lift a bridge single-handedly, right? Clearly that's not true. Um, but that is our failing as women, in my opinion. It's not the men's fault. If and when we develop and unleash our own self-confidence, um, and stop getting hung up on our own misconceptions, we too can demonstrate how incredibly talented we are. You only have to look at the recent promotion boards, operational successes, and daily sporting achievements to see this. We as females must not be intimidated. We must respect our own key skills and experience and not be afraid to show them off and shine. There's a study out there that suggests that if there are 10 criteria to, um, in order to class yourself as confident, men would be very content in saying that they were absolutely confident having hit only two or three of the 10. 
However, women would need to hit seven to nine of the criteria to even consider themselves as being partially confident. So girls, I'm going to say it. It's okay to go out there and launch yourself at 60%, but you have to believe in yourselves. Have strengths, um, sorry, have the self-confidence to step forward and be recognized for your strengths and to embrace your weaknesses. Seek help in these areas if that's what you want to do. Self-confidence will help in the stepping stones to success. Everyone has at least a little bit of fabulous in them. Break it out and shine. So, oh. Role models and mentors. I hope that everyone on this call can look back into their lives and pick out a few key people who have helped, advised, developed and influenced your lives and helped you be the people that you are. That may start with parents, continue through key teachers and then go on to employers. Through my life, I've been especially lucky, especially in my career, and I've, I've had um, very special people who have influenced me. It is so important to have a role model someone who you can look up to, take advice from, approach when you have a question, talk to when you've made a mistake, and most importantly, be corrected when you've got it wrong. A key point here, and something I do see a lot more in women than I do in men, is not to take things personally. Sometimes we do get it wrong and we need to be told, and that's absolutely fine because we can learn from it and we can be much stronger going forward. Never dwell on things, take the positives and simply move on. I then come on to bad role models, and I feel quite strongly about this. We've all worked for some of them, both male and female. I'm such a believer that sometimes you can learn more from these kinds of people. You learn the kinds of leaders, managers, and commanders that you don't want to be. How to teach people, um, sorry, how not to teach people, and most importantly, through thinking about how those bad role models have made you feel, how not to replicate their behavior. And then there's you. Every single one of you can be a role model from where you are. That doesn't mean being the poster girl for female issues. That just means taking the time to invest in others, just taking a bit of your time to help someone else and develop them. If we want behaviours to change, it isn't necessarily our responsibility as women to change them, but we do play a massive part. Be a role model for your people. Trust your team. Let's just unpack that your people bit a little bit more. Who are they? Friends, family, university friends, sports teams, colleagues, your troop, your squadron, your regiment, it goes on. When you look at the people you have around you, embrace the talent that they have. Use it and recognize it so that your people feel valued. You may not know this yet, but they need you. Sorry, you need them far more than they need you. In the military engineering environment, I am an officer and I'm in charge, fact. But put me in the middle of Basra and tell me to build a 400 man camp or in Helmand with a small team and tell us to build a bomb proof road that stretches the length of the green zone. I would have been lost without the talented people that I had around me. I may be in charge, but I'm absolutely not the expert. Never be afraid to ask for help. It, it is absolutely not a weakness. In fact, I would argue it is a huge strength as you're recognizing the value in your team. In my work environment, I will always be the boss, but I know very, very little about things such as concreting, albeit I will say I learned more about it than I ever wished to know when I was in Iraq. But my soldiers, my subordinates are, are the experts and they need to tell me what needs to be done. This does take trust. They need to trust me to lead them to success and I need to trust them to give me what I need in order to get them there. I never really understood this concept fully until I hit subunit command. Trust means that you rely on someone else to do the right thing. It provides a sense of safety. When your team members feel safe with each other, they feel safe to open up, take appropriate risks and expose vulnerabilities. I do believe this is a contributing factor to why females prove time and time again that they can get so much out of their teams. Once we can move past our own hang-ups and misconceptions of being viewed as weak, we are generally not afraid to ask and more importantly, empower those uh, within our teams. So what am I saying? Take time to get to know your teams. Listen to them. Know what's going on in their lives. What motivates them? What demotivates them? Uh, and, and what skill sets do they have? And once you know this, use it. They'll feel valued and you'll start to see successes as a team. And that is an absolutely amazing feeling. They may even surprise you with some of the crazy skills that they've got up their sleeves. 
leadership. Now there's so much leadership experience on this conference call uh, and there are complete subject matter experts in it. I am not about to lecture anybody on leadership, but I think it would be remiss not to mention it. Two years ago, I was asked to give an after dinner speech um, and it was on female leadership. I was fairly confident that I'd absolutely be able to nail it. Um, after all, I was a female leader and that is my trade. However, I found myself looking up books, researching the subject, I read papers, and I even went back through notes that I'd made at Sandhurst. And I came up with one simple conclusion. Leadership is just leadership, plain and simple. There is no such thing, in my opinion, as female leadership. All the theories and the philosophies are exactly the same, but what I would probably argue is that the application is somewhat different. Let's face it, men and women are different and we wouldn't want to change that. So let's look at the natural female traits and celebrate now how these make good leaders. Now on this bit, I'm going to massively generalize and I please ask you to forgive me for that. But I am gonna say that generally it is perceived that women are more caring and have in some cases a more maternal instinct. Don't take that as a negative, it is a huge positive. It leans back to what I said about the fact you're more likely to know more about your team members. You will care about how they feel and this leads to transformational leadership. Female leaders and managers aim to accomplish goals by transforming their teams into better people. They inspire. They take time to coach their teams and care about their personal development. They emphasize teamwork and communication as a key to success. Can anybody really say that this is a bad thing? Multitasking. How many of you, whilst you've been out there in lockdown, have achieved things that you just didn't think were possible? I certainly have. My life was packed to the absolute brim before we went into lockdown, but somehow over the last 13 weeks, as well as working full time, I've managed to manage a home, provide three square meals a day for a family, prep and clean up from those meals, as well as homeschool two children under seven. I think this is a skill set to be celebrated and it certainly makes you employable. General, General Slim said the famous quote, leadership is just plain you. That is correct, but never make the mistake of thinking leadership is about you. As I've alluded to, women are very self-aware and will know immediately when things are not right in their teens. So have the courage to stop and assess the situation. And if you need to adjust your leadership style to get the best out of your team, your people do it. This is not a failure, it's striving for success, which you will achieve. Humility is a characteristic of leadership and when it's applied correctly, it is hugely powerful. Look on leadership as a trade. Many of you have worked hard in your trades to perfect it over the years and you've done years of practice. Leadership is absolutely no different. There is a definite transition, as Emma alluded to, between being a specialist in a trade and a leader. But I'll say it again, take the leap, believe in yourself and simply go for it. You can do it if you want to, um, by being, and by being a leader, you start on the ladder of being able to influence change. So my next point is about making the change. Throughout the organization of this conference, I've been fairly adamant that I wanted it to be a positive celebration of women in both civil and military engineering, and I hope that we've achieved that today. But I feel I cannot ignore the elephant in the room. Being a female in a man's world for the majority of my career has been hard. Myself and RQ Reed are hugely conscious that the world of bum slapping, small minded comments and on several occasions discrimination was something that became the norm at the front end of our careers. Behaviours were bad and highlighting them just did not seem to be a sensible option. I mean, who would have listened or cared, right? But we and many more female senior uh, and many more senior females in the Corps now recognise that that was absolutely wrong and we must do um, what we can so that the young females, soldiers and officers of the court don't experience what we did. So we, need, so we all need to help make change, not just the women. We need to make change to um, the working environment for, to make it better for absolutely everyone. This is 100% not the women's responsibility to make these changes. This is down to a cultural change engendered by our chain of command those people we put our trust into. However, we do play a massive part in that. We need to have the courage to speak out when we see something inappropriate, unkind, or just uncalled for. We need to make low level changes. And I'll give you an example. If a man speaks in a firm voice, he is being assertive. If a woman does it, she is being bossy. Let's ban this kind of, behavior, uh, this kind of language. Communicate and educate people 
that's male and females from the pre-integrated generation. And what do I mean by that? Pre-integrated generation is the generation of people like myself and those before me who are used to coming through training regiments in single sex platoons. They are used to single accommodation. They are used to being absolutely separated, male and female. That is not something that the youth of today is used to. So I'll say it again. Communicate and educate people from the pre-integrated generation and help them understand the integrated generation. Those of us from the pre-integrated generation, listen and don't be offended when a young whippersnapper has the confidence and humility to educate you. Take it on board, think about it and maybe start a cultural change in your environment and with your people. If you can make one small change for good in your environment, I believe you have achieved success. And my final point is have fun. It's all too easy to get sucked into the complexities of life and the seriousness of every situation. Have fun setting goals, finding your self-confidence, having the courage to launch when you're 60% ready, finding and being a role model, building your team, learning from them and leading them. Get excited about making change no matter how big or small and remember to laugh every day, especially at yourself, whilst you're out there shaping your world.